In this video, we're going to do four things to get ready to install Active Directory and create our two servers that you see I have here as domain controllers. So we're going to create a virtual network within VMware Pro that we can then put all these machines in so that they can talk to each other without messing up any of our production networks. And since we're going to turn on D DNS and DHCP, we want to make sure they're not going to mess with anything. So we'll do this inside our autonomous or you know separate environment. So we'll create that, that virtual network. We will add an additional 10 gig hard drive, which is Microsoft's best practice for our SysVol. As we install Active Directory in, in the subsequent video, you'll see we need an additional disk to do that. So we're going to do all of that here in VMware. And then we're going to go into the machines, into the operating systems. We're going to turn on the default admin account and initialize, format, and name that additional hard drive that we're, we're going to create. So let's go up to edit here and virtual network editor. We're going to create that virtual network that we need. We're going to need to give it administrative privileges to do this. So you'll have to accept the user access control and it'll reopen up. At this point, we are going to add a network. And I notice here, let me quickly remove this one because that's the one we're going to add. So I'm going to go into add network and I'm going to choose VNet 10. So I'll say OK. You can choose any of the VNets that you would like to use. At this point, it will be host only. We do want to connect a host virtual adapter to this network, but we are going to turn off local DHCP. And the reason we're going to turn off local DHCP is in a subsequent lesson, we are going to actually create uh, one of our domain controllers to be a DHCP server. So uh, as you can see, I've got a 172.16.0.0. I don't want to do a 196 because I want to make this simulate an enterprise network. So with a 172.16 class B and a 240 subnet, I'm going to be able to get up to 16 subnetworks with 4,096 clients in each. So definitely there's room to grow here. So think about planning that IP schema if you're ever building a network from scratch. I'll go ahead and say OK, and I'll have the V network. Now, as you can see, my network adapter here is assigned NAT. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to choose a custom VNet and I'm going to add it to that VNet 10. And I'll say OK. Now, if you notice it's on VNet 10, I'll go to my second one and do the same thing. And I'll say OK, which is off the screen. At this point, I need to add an additional hard drive here. So I'm going to edit the virtual machine settings. Now I need to do this with the virtual machine off. So I'm going to edit virtual machine settings. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this in the first one, and then you all will make sure to do it in both. So user access control. I'm going to add a hard disk. Next. Uh, SCSI is good. Independent disks uh, are not affected by snapshots. So remember at this point, taking a snapshot of an Active Directory domain controller Definitely not recommended. So SCSI, it can be persistent. I don't need it to be independent. I'll choose Next. I'll create a new virtual disk. The size I need is only 10 gigs, so I'm going to make that 10 gig. And I will store it as a single file. I don't plan on moving these around. So if you notice here, it's got dash zero. And I'm going to just add to this sysvol so I know it's zero sysvol for DC one. So I'll say finish. And if you notice, I have that extra hard drive. I'll say OK, which is off the screen. And you'll show it here. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while both of us do it to the second domain controller. All right, so as you can see, I've got these assigned to the VNet 10 network, both of them. And they have the extra 10 gig drive that's needed. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I fire up these machines. And we'll get in there and do the rest of what we need to do. So as you can see, I'm in both my servers, and I want to make sure that I do the rest of this stuff as the local administrator account. So if you haven't already, go in here, type in CMD, and open up the command prompt, but make sure you're running it as administrator. So we'll open up the command prompt, and then we're simply going to run the following command which is net space user space administrator, making sure we spell it correctly, space 
forward slash active colon yes. And then we'll say enter and the command will complete successfully. That's going to instantiate the default administrator account if you haven't already. I'm going to go ahead and pause while you and I both do it on our second domain controller. So as you can see, I've done it on both machines. I'm going to go back to this machine and you definitely want to go in and give that administrator a good default password. And we can do that by going back here and typing in user. That's going to bring up our user account selection. There it is. I'll double click on user accounts. I'm going to manage another account. There's my administrator account. So I'm going to manage that account and I'm going to create a password. I'll give it a nice complex password. I'll create that password. And then at this point, what I'm going to go ahead and do is do a control alt delete and restart my machine so that I can get in as the administrator. I'll pause and do this on the next one as well. So I've done this on the second server. Again, all of these things you're going to want to complete on both servers. Um, I'm then going to make sure I choose the administrator account and I will log in. Now, the last thing we're going to do in this video is to instantiate that other hard drive that we created. So what I can do is come down here, right click. I will go to disk management and open it up. Sorry, server manager. I don't need you at this time. There's my disk right there that I need. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm going to right click. I'm going to bring that disk online. It's not initialized. I'll right click and initialize the disk. That's the disk that I want to initialize. MBR is fine, so I'll choose OK. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and create a new simple volume. Next, I'll use all the space on the disk. I like to use S as in sysfall, so I'll give it S. Next, it needs to be NTFS. Default is fine. And this will be the sysvol name of the disk. So I'll say next and finish. It'll go ahead and format the drive. And as you can see, the drive is ready to go. I'll go ahead and pause while I do this on the second server. So at this point, we've created that virtual network, assigned both of our virtual machines to that network. We instantiated a 10 gig virtual hard drive outside in the VMware settings. We've turned on the administrative default account and we've initialized that hard drive so that it's ready for installation of Active Directory. Now, as I said, go ahead and initialize using that same command any clients that you have, Windows 8, Windows 10 clients, so that you have that default administrator account to work with as well. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and install the Active Directory role to both of our servers. Take care.